Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're, we're going to be solving a quintic equation with complex numbers. Quintic? There's no quintic formula, is there? Yes, it is. I mean, there's no formula. <laughs> I wasn't answering that question. But uh, this one is quintic, but it's an easy kind because it's factorable. How? Let's go ahead and take a look at it from two different perspectives and start with the first method. So notice that z is a common factor, and if you take it out, you're going to end up with a quartic. Not just an ordinary quartic, but a biquadratic, which means by way of substitution, you can turn this into a quadratic equation easily because there is no z term or z cubed. Make sense? Great. Let's go ahead and see how we can do it. But first of all, let's acknowledge a trivial solution. From here, we get z equals 0. You probably knew that because if you replace z with 0 in the original equation, it is satisfied. But we're interested in the non-trivial ones. Let's go ahead and solve them by using an awesome method called substitution. Yes, substitution is awesome and often overlooked, but you should always try to take advantage. So how do you solve z to the fourth plus z squared plus 1 equals 0? I mean, you could definitely use the quartic formula because this is a depressed, a very depressed quartic indeed. And you can just use the quartic formula. To use the quartic formula, you could isolate z to the fourth and then add something to both sides to make it a perfect square. And in this case, I think that would be something like 2k z squared plus k squared. And then you do the same thing on the right hand side. Let's write that first because those are positive terms. And then you can kind of put these two together. That'll be 2k plus 1z squared. And then, uh-oh, I don't have any z in there. Well, th would this work? It probably is going to work. But anyways, so I think this is what should ha be happening. If you want to be this to be a perfect square, on the left-hand side, we have z squared plus k quantity squared. If the right-hand side is a square 2, then we kind of need to get rid of the constant term because that's going to prevent it from being a perfect square. Make sense? So in other words, k squared minus 1 should be 0, which means k is either 1 or negative 1. And you can just proceed with the rest. The rest is trivial and left as an exercise for the reader. I mean the viewer. So don't get mad at me because this is going to help you uh, be more familiar with these kind, kinds of equations. Okay? Great. Let's go ahead and see what else can we do with this for solving. Like how can we solve this equation? Well, that's by quadratic, remember? My comment about it, z to the fourth minus z squared plus 1 equals 0. So we can just go ahead and call this w. And this will be w squared. And notice that there is no other z term. Now we get w squared plus w plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. And this is quadratic, so we can solve it very easily. The, some of you will probably recognize this. This is a very, very special quadratic. If you multiply both sides by w minus 1, you're going to notice these are actually the cube roots of unity, but with an exception, right? Anyways, uh, let me not give away too much. Uh, using the formula gives us negative 1 plus minus the square root of 3i divided by 2. Okay, so those are the w values. What am I going to do with them? Set them equal to z squared because w is z squared. Remember that? Did you forget? So now we have z squared equals. Let's just take one of them first, this one. Now, you can do this in two different ways again. You can kind of set this equal to a plus bi, like z equal to a plus bi, and square it. Expand this, and then set the real parts, and set the imaginary parts, solve a system of equations. You don't really need to. This is a really, really special equation. That's why we're going to use a special method to take the square root of this number. We're going to write this in polar form. So what is this in polar form? Think about it. First of all, its modulus is 1 because of the negative 1 half and root 3 over 2. Remember, those are cosines and sines. And uh, looking at the sines like negative cosine and positive sine, uh, that kind of tells me we're in the second quadrant. And if I go to the first, that's going to be 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. I just have to subtract from pi, which is 2 pi over 3. If you're doing trigonometry, you probably know these conversions. If not, go ahead and study the unit circle. Unit circle is awesome, and you're going to need it. It's crazy. Anyway, so this can be written as, since the modulus is 1, e to the power i times 2 pi over 3. But I also want to add the um, multiples of, uh oh, I added an extra i. 
I want to add the multiples of 2 pi because we're going to take square roots and we do need multiple values. If you take the square root, it's fairly easy in the exponential form. All you have to do is cut the angles in half. It's going to give you pi over 3 plus pi n. n is an integer, so n can be 0 or n can be 1. If n is equal to 0, you're going to get z equals e to the power i pi over 3, which is the 60. By the way, this is going to be 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. And then, if n is equal to 1, you're going to get pi over 3 plus pi, which is 4 pi over 3, and then you're going to get something similar. But 4 pi over 3, you got to remember, is in the fourth quadrant or third? I think it's third. So both of these values are going to be negative. Make sense? Those are going to be the answers, and you can also work with the second equation the exact same way, right? Make sense? So what else are you going to do here? You can set this equal to that number, and then we do need this in polar form. And again, modulus 1, but this time both are negative. That means you're in the third quadrant. We just talked about it, didn't we? That would be e to the power i times 4 pi over 3, and then just cut it in half, add the per period, whatever, so on and so forth, and you should be able to get the answer from here. Let's just go ahead and do it. Same way, maybe use a 2 pi k this time, a different integer k is an integer, n is an integer, by the way, in case you didn't know, then you can cut this in half, 2 pi over 3 plus pi k, and again, if k is equal to 0, you're going to get z equals e to the power i times 2 pi over 3, and I wanted to separate the i because then you can see the argument, and the other value for k equals 1 is just going to be 2 pi over 3 plus pi, which is 5 pi over 3. Again, you can find these values, and if you want to write them in standard form, just replace them with cosine and sine. Make sense? Okay, I hope this makes sense, and you can definitely finish it up if you want, because I really want to talk about the second method. The second method is really cool, I think, and can be applied to a variety of problems, which is uh, why I like it, especially. And here is how that works. Now, I'm going to ignore the z equals 0 solution because that's too trivial. And you already know that. Uh, I'm just going to stick to the quartic. Now, to solve this quartic, obviously, uh, we could use the formula, right? Even though that's going to be probably a little painful. Maybe not. No, actually, we, we did it and we got some good results, right? Anyways, so here's what we can do. We can multiply both sides by something so that we can turn it into something nice. <laughs> what do I mean by that? It's kind of ambiguous, right? So here's what I mean. If you multiply both sides of this by, not both sides, I should probably say the following. Actually, maybe. Yeah, we can do both sides. Okay, fine. I was going to multiply and divide, but that's not uh, necessary. So I'm going to multiply by z squared minus 1. It's still going to be 0. One thing that I need to be careful about is I introduce extraneous solutions. So whatever comes from here being 0 should not be included because they were not existent in the original. Look at this, right? I didn't have those. But z equals plus minus 1 come from here, so I should ignore them. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, under those conditions, let's go ahead and simplify this. If you do the math, you're going to realize, hey, this turns into z to the 6 minus 1 equals 0, which means z to the 6 equals 1, and z1 can be written as e to the power 2 pi mi. I, this time, I use the different integer. This means you're dealing with the six roots of unity, and you can pretty much find them from here, but guess what? You have to exclude... 1 and negative 1. And obviously, 1 and negative 1 are among the 6 roots of unity because if you raise negative 1 to the 6th power and 1 to the 6th power, you get 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.